Sup everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm bringing you the review for Quantum Break for Xbox One and PC by the fine folks at Remedy. Quantum Break tells the tale of a man who gets special powers because, as we know, accidents don't cause burns or horrible disfiguring injuries. No siree, they cause powers. You play as Jack Joyce, who's sort of like a mixture of that little girl in the movie Firestarter before she was Tom Green, and the Emperor running around with unlimited power to affect time. Sadly, the same experiment and disaster that gave Jack's power also screwed up time, and it's on its inevitable way to an intersection towards a sticky end brought to you by the evil geniuses called monarch so let's do this as always if you like the video eh, maybe subscribe so here's the review for quantum break actual real superman punches a starting character that looks like a choir boy but can shoot the dick off a wet shrew at 90 yards and the world's worst lifeboat graphics are up first <laughs> listen if you want to know what it's like tripping balls on a joe rogan ted nugent sleepover then turn this thing on but don't expect perfection quantum break is really the very epitome of a mixed bag stunning you with time effects temporal ripples and overlapping visions of polygon people falling the hell apart right in front of you at all times the game can look absolutely mind-altering and it's in some ways an excellent example that any one graphical construct or part is not the only pillar that creates a game's artistic direction on the Xbox One, it's 30 frames per second. For the most part, there are a couple drops, and anything you really want on the PC if you have the cash, though there is an option to lock it if you want. The game really always offers an incredible array of volumetric lighting effects, varied and numerous lighting sources, and particle creation that at times can almost be detrimental to gameplay, with the world literally ripping and warping around you, even if you're just walking past a crapper. Walk under a car and it's half-created explosion as it loops back and forth from being totally fine to being at the end of some poor passerby by who just got caught up in the moment. Rush through the confines of an entire cargo ship as it falls around you with the world resetting and rewinding every 10 seconds, changing the entire level construction as you go, or at least that level construction right near you. Sadly, not all is perfect in Quantum Break. If you think of resolution on your screen like a window you view the world through, and each render in the game it's within uses different methods to clean the screen and offer you a cleaner and cleaner view of what's within the game world. Quantum Break is trying to get away with less cleaner and more window wipes. Using temporal reconstruction, which is a method of sampling and calculating and reconstructing a 1080p image from lower resolution images from the prior frames, you get a pretty good picture that's better than anything 720p upscaled could ever get you, but you also don't get something that's perfect 1080p native. Think sort of how Rainbow Six did it on the consoles and you're somewhat close in the rendering style here, though each developer that's used this in the past uses it with a different combination of other graphical features. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't look amazing, it does, but sadly the renderer applies many of the special effects at this lower resolution and so when the entire picture is later reconstructed to a 1080p image, you get special effects with horribly boxy and dither dancing shadows, effects blinking in and out when prior frames aren't available for reconstruction, and ghosting on the main character, metal ceilings, stairs, desks, windows, walls, floors, and pretty much anything within the title that even thinks of moving. Though, as I said when Killzone originally came out, these new ways of getting more for less aren't exactly new. It's something that happens in a lot of games. These new means are just more aggressive and come with their own caveats, which results, at least in Quantum Break, in a softer total image that's heavily anti-aliased for good effect, but also has an almost hypnotic array of smaller problems on screen at any one time. In fact, the better it looks and the cooler the scene, the more you find yourself noticing those issues. Lastly, I have to say movement is wonky to say the least, with the main character rubbing, fondling, and sliding his way around objects, even if you're trying something as simple as getting onto a set of boxes. Since cover isn't a pop and stop style like Gears, but more like a rub and run style, it's incredibly soft, resulting in a pop goes the weasel kind of gameplay at times of frequent movement, where one little nudge in your controller sends the main character into the middle of the room standing straight up, like everyone really just got the shock of their lives and he wants to call a moment of truce so they can all ponder it. One great thing though, and totally deserving mention, is that both the guns and special effects have a great tactile feeling to them and you feel like you're creating something when you send a time bubble app to wrap up soldiers or you unload a multi-burst handgun into someone's chest trying to find where their heart is. I'd say this, Quantum Break actually does look amazing at times, but much of it is held back by secondary effects miscalculations, even while the primary time effects makes your jaw drop from time to time. Sound, music, and voice.
And of course, sound is up first in this grouping. This is also a bit hit and miss. Firstly, the gun's explosives and overall effects are just okay, and many of the guns really lack the low quality sonic boom you expect from a weapon. I'm releasing NPC spirits from the soft fleshy confines of their bodies. I want to hear it. Now, that being said, the game's almost consistent use of time effects does bring the entire presentation to a completely new level, and one that hasn't really been experienced before in prior games. Not only because of how well it's done, but for the fact that you can many times see the effect being produced and or reproduced, which is actually fairly rare in titles. Most people couldn't identify their reverb from their echo or understand many of the idiosyncrasies of even surround sound. But all over Quantum Break, it's a visual feast that is at the same time producing those sounds and allowing the gamer to walk through the center of it like living through one of those snow-caused 100-car pileups that sadly still happen. It's really ingenious to walk through all of this in slow motion as it's occurring, whether it's the slowed-down ripple of fire stuck in a time blast or the constant repeating fiery crash of a car on a destroyed bridge or fighting enemies that can zip through time and getting to see a bit of your own medicine played out on you and that familiar and noteworthy whoosh sound as they slide through time. The game may not have the best sounds natively, but with the effects applied consistently and heavy use of filtering, echo, reverb, and time sampling, it's astounding just as a presentation to sort of experience. Music. This is excellent. A soundtrack that's easily movie quality with callbacks to more epic and emotionally complex fare like Interstellar and other science fiction shows to a scattering of the same indie music that Remedy threw into Alan Wake with their made-up bands, but also with fully licensed music at the end of each chapter as an excellent cutoff and creationary moment for the prior and next chapters. It's not only excellent music, but it's the almost tactician way in which they employ it throughout the title that really impressed me. For example, the moment a character ends up in a location they've wanted to get to since the starting of the game, the music and the look on the character's face imparts to you the fact that, oh shit, they now see that just sort of like meeting your heroes, most of the time the destination ain't up to the awesomeness of the trip itself. The music within the TV episode merges with that of the game seamlessly. Excellent music. Voice. Aiden Gillian, Dominic Monaghan, Lance Reddick, Sean Ashmore, Courtney Hope. That's just the first couple. And the best part is no one actor really seals the deal here, whether it's one character's conflicted leading of Monarch and his descent into terror, or Lance's hilariously scary businessman who gives hostile takeover a whole new meaning. Dominic isn't in the title as much as the others, but his delivery spot on as a youthful, but already probably a bit touched mad scientist. And that, of course, leaves Sean as the main character as Joyce and Courtney Hope as Beth. And there's a massive number more, both throughout the game and the show. Probably one of the first games I've ever played where any single character didn't really bring down or up some aspect of the title. Excellent voice work throughout. Oh, and one last shout out to Patrick Housinger, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. He plays a pivotal role in the included show, but isn't in the game very much. That dude was straight up born to be in movies and video games. Great job. Gameplay. Basically, you're Jack Joyce running through the mysteries of time as you try to fix what's broken, or you can also play as a couple other characters in smaller parts throughout the title. Each location is sanctioned out into sequences and linear levels where you fight bad guys, perform time trickery on items to solve a puzzle, battle, and upgrade. First, let's talk a little bit about upgrading. Guns don't need to be upgraded because in the first like 30 minutes, your character says once that I have used a gun before and promptly proceeds to ruin folks like a 1980s action hero that keeps telling everyone he just wants to be left alone and then spin kicks all their dinner plates off the table. No lie, at some point, I wouldn't have been surprised had he looked at the camera and said, I also cook, like a Steven Seagal quote. But with powers, it's sort of all about the upgrade. Powers like time freeze, time shield, and other powers with a prefix of time can be upgraded by finding glowing bits of displaced energy and then spinning them to upgrade your abilities, stain power, strength, and other little tidbits. It's best to know right now that this is very shallow with only a few skills, so don't expect an RPG. Luckily, you can feel the difference each upgrade delivers. Gunplay is fairly rote with a mixture of run and gun and picking up all manner of cool military gadgetry, as well as mixing your skills into your gunplay, like time dashing behind enemies and taking them out from behind because that big yellow glow on their backpack is either the world's worst weakness indicator or... No, that's actually exactly what it is. You see, Quantum Break is a much better game when it isn't leading you by the hand. For instance, when a mixture of bad guys enter a level and you can combo your time power zipping behind one enemy, killing him with a true Superman punch to flipping behind another and time freezing the area around him, and unloading a full clip before time turns back on and all that lead hits all that bad guy, that's just a beginning of the magic when the game is not putting the reins to you. You see, 
Other times, it completely falls flat. Take, for instance, the forced and frankly boring platforming locations where you're leaping around a bridge that's stuck in time, but sadly, those effects are only shown when you're right near them, just like the giant ship explosion cinematic we've seen. You look back or too far forward and the entire location you just traveled through is actually completely stationary. Add to that a number of clipping issues and just poor puzzle timing, and you get this very odd feeling that something somewhere is holding the entire game back. That doesn't mean it's bad, far from it. As the story gets going, Jack gets more powerful and you're invited to understand the machinations of disaster that Monarch has really put in its master plan. The entire game absolutely comes together later. Indeed, there's a very good chance that your entire opinion will be possibly changing as you play because the start to Quantum just is not that strong or gripping. The starting location looked okay, but we're absolutely rendered down to its most basic gameplay elements of climb, find simple puzzle, hit button, and move on. Now, that doesn't change, but what's added to it is the other elements of the game that begin to feed into it. As you gain more powers, as you see the situation from both sides, and as you're rocked by a story that actually has some real grit to it later on, you begin to understand what's happened here, and even the most rote and linear of levels matters far more because of what it is in the story. Oh, and also, this is indeed Time Alan Wake. I'm not kidding. It's pace and feel is identical. A character with a mysterious power fights a darkness with his own newfound abilities that seem perfected for it, and slowly discovers the horrible truth from both sides, actually deconstructing the original summary the player supposed and replacing it with a whole new one. We have Beth as Barry, your brother's Alice, though with a different ending. Hartman in Alan Wake is represented perfectly in Quantum Break, right down to the desire to see this world destroyed and their own version of balance or utopia restored in a new world, even with the delivery of solid prose backed behind an almost infuriating calm. It's beat for beat here. Now, does that mean it's bad? No. In many ways, it feels a little bit like playing different Bioware games, where they all have a little bit of similarity there, and that's fine. In fact, for many who enjoy narrative duality and their storytelling, this may add to the mystery, as there are small hints that Quantum Break is either within the same universe as Alan Wake or, surprise, surprise, one of his stories. It's very cool, in fact. Lastly, you really have this massive plus for a linear title, and that's the ability to replay it with different decisions at these things called junction points, which are sort of like a choose-your-own-adventure per level, and you get to see what effect that makes in the game and in the show. The junction points also have a cool subtlety to them, as sometimes very little changes, but the actual meaning of things behind the scenes does. An action takes on an almost cold, brutal feeling if one decision is made, or an absolutely heartfelt decision if another is made. As a package, I have to say I enjoyed a good deal of the gameplay in Quantum Break, but it had to grow on me much more than I could have ever expected, and in many ways, strengths from other aspects of the title, like the somewhat non-linear storytelling, filled in the gaps and the weaknesses. Fun Factor. Honestly, the game is fun. It's just ultimately a little bit unsurprising and its requirement of faith from the player at first to push them through what I think some will find as rightfully rote gameplay is sort of a lot to ask. Listen, the game leaps into the middle, goes back to the start and hints at the finish in the first 30 minutes with very little in past connectivity and story tissue to the current experience, resulting in this moment when I was climbing up a ladder and actually said out loud, I have no clue what is even going on right now. This does get cleared up later, so I'm telling you, if you get the game, you want to push through that. But the game's adherence to the TV show's middle sections resulted in less detail within the game's cutscenes. And certainly, the game is a little bit in love with its own mystery. All that being said, the more I played it, the more it grew on me. So I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. This is a buy. The ability to affect the story and replay a good deal of it, as well as the pretty solid gameplay, make it worth picking up. And it easily has the length. But this isn't a fantastic title. Far from it. It's a solid title. While it's easy to get caught up in the spectacle that's presented almost Roman Colosseum-like, it's much more important to understand what the game actually offers as a total package and not just moments cut for pictures on internet forums. In the end, it's a solid title and worth the money, but it's not without its weaknesses. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And remember this, I may not be a big YouTube group or an X website channel with a massive following and a ballooned out patron account, but I'll give you content like they do. Peace out.